I gotta be honest, this is the fastest tripod I've seen in my life. Ta-da! So everybody knows you as Potato Jet from YouTube, but Gene, you're, you're now making tripods. Tell me a little bit about this. Yeah, so this is the Tribex, which is a tripod that Small Rig and I co-designed, and we've been working on it for a while. Essentially, it's to take care of the problem that we all face of running out of lights or someone showing up late, and now you have 20 minutes when you were supposed to have 40 minutes, or you know, you're just always behind schedule and we always want more shots. So essentially, we just wanted to try to figure out how do we make the shot from shot transition as fast as, and as smooth as possible. So yeah, basically we just put it all, uh, we basically have this X clutch system right here where it's very simple how it works. You just squeeze it, all the legs and stages release. And then when you let go, everything grips. And it's uh, pretty sturdy actually. Here, maybe I can come over here and I'll show you how sturdy it is. So yeah, here, let me do this. I'll show you a quick little demo here. So uh, you wanna go from waist level to say chest height. I can go ahead and do this and already it's pretty good at being strong. So I can just like hang on this thing. Uh, that <laughs> um, this is a prototype, so they keep telling me not to do it, but <laughs> I mean, I've put a lot of hours using this and uh, I have some trust in it at this point. Um, but yeah. Uh, so, you know, they're all saying, a lot of brands are saying our, our tripod is the fastest to deploy. But I would say it's not how fast you deploy it, it's how fast you move it from place to place, right? Right, right. Yeah, exactly. So for uneven terrain, we can go ahead and just, you know, I can just focus on where the bubble level is. Well, I could just figure out where I want the camera to be, and then I just deploy the clutch, and basically all the legs just drop to where they need to go. And also another thing is usually, you no, know, I think we've all been kind of trained to set up the tripod legs and then the second half is balancing the head. But here we had a lot of versions where we had uh, release up here to balance separately, but I've actually found that all those different things that we've tried for the balancing, actually just this, grabbing this clutch is just the fastest thing. So, you know, even if it's unbalanced like this, uh, it's just faster to just grab the clutch and then just let go, level it out like that. So what we, we started to realize is after a little bit of practice, you get to the point where you actually set up the legs the height at the same time you actually level out the camera. So then it actually really makes the whole process smooth. So yeah, exactly, from shot to shot, you can go from a low angle to a high angle. And then, you know, like one of the good, like I feel like one example is inside of a vehicle, if you've ever tried to set up a tripod inside of a vehicle, it's like you got one, one, exactly, one needs to land on the seat, one needs to land on the floor, and they're all different lengths. But here, you just kind of hold it. Here, let me go ahead and compress this and I'll show you. But, but here I get to like, but here's actually pretty easy to, you know, hold it and just figure out mm, where do you want the camera angle? And once you find the right spot, you just grab it and all the legs release to where they need to go. You let go and you're so set. This is, this is a change in the workflow, right? So instead of setting up the tripod where you kind of wanted to go and then balancing out, you place the camera in a 3D dimensional space, and then it automatically, automatically uh, being stable on the tripod. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely the goal is to have a two-step process turn into one step. And it, it did take us a little while to kind of commit to this, but I've set up so many shots at this point just with this. And I realized that like, I don't actually need to use the bubble leveler. And if I'm using like a different level system, it just, it just slows down the process. So we actually decided to just completely eliminate it and focus on making sure it's more compact and a bit more cost effective as well. And, and I'm, this is a tiny tripod size-wise, but I'm seeing this is not a small mirrorless camera. So talk to me a little bit about capacities. Yeah, so when it came to the camera we wanted to put on here, that's kind of what we started our design with. And we really wanted to kind of embrace what the mid-size cameras are capable of now. I'm going on pretty big shoots sometimes and I just see a handful of FX6s or FX9s or FX3s rigged out or you know C70s. There's so many great cameras now that are in this size. So we really wanted to like focus on the size of what compact professional cameras are now and really design it based on that size. But FX6 is totally comfortable. Like this is kind of the middle of where it feels comfortable, but of course rigged out FX3. And How about if I have a smaller camera, like an A7, whatever, will that still work on this? Yeah, definitely. So we are kind of playing with a couple of different plates too. So you can just have you know, an Arca Swiss plate on that, and then you can just drop in straight onto the tripod because this is a Manfrotto style plate. And currently actually it's designed for, you know, to go back and forth between like a Ronin RS3 or RS4 real fast. So basically we have a little stopper right here that can switch between standard Manfrotto plate or 
uh, RS3, RS4. It's like a signature small rig thing. Exactly, yeah. So they, I thought that was brilliant when I first saw that they did that, but it's great because you can just go straight from gimbal onto here and then adjust your height. And it's really just designed to be a really good solo operator system where you can move real fast, but also still have the performance capabilities like counterbalance and something this size. Uh, it was definitely a challenge to try to add counterbalance. And this is a tiny head. Exactly, yeah. And we are still modifying bits of it just to get that performance exactly where we want it to be. Of course, there's always compromises by trying to make a head small. You know, I'm learning a lot about engineering before I used to be able to just make videos and be like, this sucks, that sucks, this is stupid, this is lame. But now it's like, oh wait, okay, uh, if I make it smaller, I have to consider all these different things and everything's a big balancing act. It's, it's, a, game, it's a game of trade-offs, right? Exactly, exactly. So it's just trying to more figure out what is the best decision for what our needs are. And yeah, essentially trying to maintain a compact size, but get as much performance and capability out of it like uh, a counterbalance because I do think that's pretty important because how often do you forget to maybe lock your head all the way and then you walk away and then all of a sudden it just does that dip, right? So Talking about value, I when we were setting up, I saw you pull a magic tool to fix the plate. How does that work? Yeah, so I always forget tools. I'm very forgetful on set. Uh, I don't like to admit it, but <laughs> I always find myself stranded. So down here, this is a bag hook at the bottom. So of course, like this, this whole tripod being carbon fiber, it is pretty lightweight. And if you do like to have your drag pretty heavy like I do, it definitely does become a little bit of a problem that it's light. So taking your backpack and hanging it on here, it just gives you a little bit more grounding and just a, a feeling of being locked a little bit more. But of course, we can pull it out with a button right here. And now we have a four mil Allen. So we could use this to attach uh, base plates onto cameras. But also, uh, there's two other things on here that we can do with it. So if you're trying to get really low to the ground, then we can basically spread out the legs. And the center column is the first thing to touch the ground. So we can actually take this head off right here and then just drop this in. So we're just basically a hi-hat. Um, so that's another. And again, that's the same tool. And also, this is just a standard 3 8 size tripod head. So if you want to use a photo head or a different head that you prefer, then you can swap it out. But the thing I hate about 3 8 inch tripods is that if you do that fast pan to the left, sometimes it breaks loose, right? So we have screws under here that these can kind of retain and it just kind of holds it and locks it into place so that you don't have to worry about that breaking loose. Because I think that's probably the biggest issue with 3 8 size tripod head, but that's a solution to that. And uh, yeah, also, if you have a tripod plate that doesn't have it, you got to fly ahead here too. So, you know, I'm just very forgetful all the time and we definitely put that into the design. <laughs> they really were really good at being like, well, what are, what, what are the things you want? And I'm like, well, I'm forgetful and I'm lazy. I hate doing tedious things. I want to move fast. I want to get all the shots I can before sunset. So this is kind of a... Uh, how, how do you take the spec down? So is it like a switch or... Oh, are you talking about the center column yeah, or... How do you take the yeah. center Oh, the center column is just a lever right here. Oh, so, so it just pops yeah, down it. like that. And then to bring it down, uh, you know, going down with the amount of friction that the, the feet are giving us, uh, I, could, I probably don't want to go straight down, but I could probably do that little the tripod dance that we do. Or, you know, it's always easy to just collapse the two of the legs a little bit and then you can just go all the way down. But going up's the easy part, right? It's just like that. And then you, it takes a little bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, it's just a, uh, a very fast system, yeah. That's, that's pretty, that's a lot of value. So how much will it go for? We're still working out pricing right now. We're, it won't be, if you're, let's say, hmm, how, what I can say is, well, okay, it's not gonna be cheap because we put a lot of R&D and we wanna really just use really good materials and make sure that it's not something that's gonna fail. So it's definitely a professional tripod, but we are also trying to figure out ways to get that price down so it is accessible. So right now we're still kind of working through a few more details in our prototypes to see, you know, how can we get a good price without compromising quality because the last thing we want is to make a tripod too cheap and then it, it's breaking on set. Obviously, and talk to me about timeline. Where can I, when can I get this? I think the goal is definitely by Q3. I think we could safely say before Q3. Uh, I think we're aiming to probably launch around July, something in that range. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. We're kind of just, we're in the final stages and it's kind of like, you know, doing the finishing touches on a video edit. You know, you're like, I think I'm 
close, but you until you fiddle with it enough. One, and, one more pass. Yeah, one more pass, one more pass. And then you're at B23 and it's like, oh, okay. But final, final. Yeah. Real final. We're at that stage, exactly. Final, final. <laughs> Gene, thank you so much for showing me this tripod. I've never seen something like this. I'm pretty excited. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. Stick around. We're going to keep walking the floor and give you more coverage from NAB. DIY Photography out. Yeah.